Welcome to Antique Quest. I'm Steve Harris and today we're going to be talking about vintage antique knife collecting. One of our subscribers asked that we did an episode on knives so um, we're going to talk about a little bit of that today. So we're going to go over a few of the main points about knife collecting and what you want to look for when you're out and about and maybe help you out as to where you might find some of these things. So we've got a good variety of knives out here. We've got hunting knives, pocket knives, jack knives, um, a few little uh, novelty knives, um, and some military knives, that sort of thing. Um, so where to begin? Okay, so in knife collecting, people tend to go into a certain focused area. So we've had collectors that just collect um, your typical hunting knives, this sort of thing. A lot of the earlier ones are like this with the leather wrapped handles um, and then other guys will just go into pocket knives and then other people will just go into novelty knives some collect just military knives which leads to bayonets and swords and this sort of thing which are getting really hard to find anymore um, a lot of us probably remember back in the old days when the army surplus stores had a barrel full of bayonets and everything was ten bucks not like that anymore they're all way up from there. So we're just going to have a look at a few of the features that you want to look for and um, I think what we're going to do is we'll start with the hunting knives. So hunting knives what you want to look for and in all knives what you want to look for is maker. Maker is hugely important. Um, you want to pick the main knife making areas which are famous. So you have Sheffield in England. Um, anything in the States pretty much is pretty strongly collected and then you have Soligen Germany. So all good blades. If you're finding a hunting knife that looks something like this and on your blade here it says China, Pakistan, Brazil, don't worry about it. You don't have anything of any great value anyway. The steel is not known to be very good. Um, at the same time this is for collecting purposes because they are making a lot of fantastic knives now. They've got a lot of new steels that hold an edge longer. Um, there's some really great custom knife makers but a lot of guys like the old school stuff and they want to stick to it so one thing to look for in an old hunting knife this one as you can see it's had a new nut put on the end here to hold the bolster on um, the leathers in half decent shape the blades not too terribly bad but it has been cleaned and buffed so the more a blade is sharpened the more it's um, worn down the less likely it's going to be to be a good collectible knife so all those things hurt it the more use you got to remember our fathers these were tools they were not collectibles so they sharpened them they put them on the grinding wheel and away they went now this one does have a bit of grinding on it it's got most of its shape i'm going to wager a guess that is not its original sheath and you want to do this especially with bayonets you pull them out and you line them up. If they don't fit, they've probably been sharpened down. So a lot of bayonets you're going to find don't fit the sheath anymore because they've had new points put on, that sort of thing, and they've been ground and reshaped. Kills the value. So um, then you're buying it as a, just a working knife. Your collectible value has just gone way down. So you want to look here. That's where you're going to get your knife makers. Um, some of the top ones to look for in England are going to be IXL. And it may be stamped actually here on the blade. You might see IXL. That's George Weston home from Sheffield, England. One of the top makers in England, in my opinion. And your other one to look for is Joseph Rogers. Um, this little knife is probably actually one of the oldest things I own according to my life. I dug that out of our family garden back in 1965, 66, somewhere around there. And it's actually a Joseph Rogers little pocket knife and I've kept it all this time. This particular one, I actually dug that out of the ground metal detecting. And that would slide your knife forward and it would be a lot like this one. It goes like that and locks into place. So this one has a bit of a gold design on it. Pretty neat thing though. Not worth a whole heck of a lot because that blade won't even come out anymore. It's just kind of neat because I dug it out of the ground. 
Now, uh, some of your other ones. If you get ones like this, and this is actually a short one. I just sold the one that was longer. But they have extremely long, thin blades, and some of them will go that long. These are typically called melon testers. And they actually used to give them out in supermarkets when you bought a ham, that sort of thing, back in the day. And they'll have the advertising printed on there of the store or the supplier, something like that. And this one actually has, uh, no, the other one had a serrated blade. This one has a straight blade. But the idea was, is that you could cut into a melon, cut out a perfect circle, and pull it out as a test. I guess that's why they got the name Melon Tester. But like I said, some of the other ones were for cutting hams and that sort of thing. And they were giveaways at the time. They would give them to you. But they make a great collectible now, and you can look for local advertising names. Um, now, ones like this. This is actually sterling silver, and so is the blade. Now, this is called the Silver Fruit Knife. And these will have your British hallmarks on here for sterling. And the idea was that this, these were just a little pocket knife that you would cut your fruit up with because the sterling's not going to tarnish and rust and that sort of thing. So you can keep it nice and clean and um, use it for cutting your fruit. But again, a whole other category of collectible knife. Um, now these, this particular one is made by Case. And Case is one of your top American knife um, companies for collecting. They've been around a long time and they're usually marked Case or Case XX. Now these we always called Navy Knives because you have the spike is for untying rope knots on your ships where you have the great big thick ropes. You're not going to do that with your fingers so you jam that in and you can untie these great big ship rope knots. Now the Navy ones tend to be just steel like this and they have a can opener. That's an old can opener that you just work around the lid rocking on this little pin there. And then you have your military ones that were military issue. Same knife basically, except you have the, uh, in this case, I think it's a plastic handle just on there, like a checkered plastic handle. Now this one's made by IXL. And again, you're gonna see the other difference you usually run into is this is a sheep's foot design blade rather than a pointed blade like this one. But this one has been sharpened quite a bit. So again, these were working tools. They, they got sharpened quite a bit and that's gonna affect the value. This one's a little different. This is Humphreys Radiant, another good Sheffield company. Um, but this one has a metal checkered shield on it and I haven't actually had one like that before, uh, before I got this one. So, a little bit different, not as desirable a maker, but still uh, highly collectible. Same idea again. Now this is Camillus in the States, and this has got the antler handle on it, which has a really nice old patina, but this has been sharpened quite a bit in life as well. Um, now, there's something I want to talk about here. Another thing to look for with old knives is what's called walk and talk. And basically what that is, is the snap. So as you can see, this one has no snap left. It doesn't snap closed unless you push it closed. There's no spring. The spring has been stretched, worn, um, has a little bit of talk, which that's called, but not much. And the blade's loose. So your whole shield is the pins are probably starting to expand and come apart here and your shields you know, moving away from its springs and it's not quite the knife it used to be at one time. Now when you get one like this, it's a little more modern but not too terribly modern. I think I got this back in the 80s. Uh, it's made by Puma, a German company. But this one is so fine. It has wonderful walk and talk. There's no play in there at all. It's a lock blade but it it's really fine like it's it's just uh, it's machined very well it has a very light pull which is the pressure that it takes to pull the knife out but I really particularly like that knife I like the shape of it it's got good steel and it's mint condition it's got nickel silver bolsters these are your bolsters here and these are your end caps and they're solid rather than, did I bring an example? No, I didn't bring an example of some of your cheaper pocket knives. Ones you're gonna typically run into are Richards, 
Sheffield, England again, but they'll have just like a chrome tin uh, bolster and end cap. Um, so the solid ones, a little more quality again going up from there. Uh, another thing you want to look for in your older pocket knives and some of the newer ones that are quality, the liner inside, that piece of metal that runs just inside the shield, you want to look for brass liners. That's usually a sign of a better quality knife. And again, this is an IXL, this is a Joseph Rogers, two of the top British makers and prolific makers. There is a lot of stuff out by them. Um, but you want to look for brass liners. Nickel silver bolsters or solid bolsters and end caps are nice. Um, this one, you can see it's just a metal cap that's been put over there, like a tin. Um, so, and that leads to this. Okay, so it's not as strong a knife, so that's something you want to look for. Um, another collectible field is crooked knives. Okay. Um, this is a fairly plain example. A lot of them were made out of like almost an old razor blade you'll see these days. And they'll be bound with copper wire. This particular one is brass. It's got decent wood. But to give you an example, this knife is priced at $85. Um, but they're very collectible and they get very elaborate in the carvings. And some of them are extremely valuable. Um, you know, you could probably buy that though today for, you know, $65. Um, but a very good collecting field, completely different than the rest of the knives. Now for hunting knives, that's a pretty <laughs> extravagant one. Nick, give him your wallet. What for? He's got a knife. <laughs> that's not a knife. That's a knife. I've never seen one quite like that before. That's quite the fancy blade. It looks like, um, you know, something Aladdin would have. Um, but that one's 55. It's made in Soligen, Germany. It has its original sheath. And you can see how nicely, if I can get it in the right spot, that fits the sheath. You know, it hasn't been ground down and changed or anything. And it's the original sheath. Um, this one, did we look at this one? This one, you can see, if I get it in the light just right, you can see it's really been ground down a lot. Still a good hunting knife, but not nearly as collectible as it once was. Now this one, on the other hand, this is a very early knife. You can see it's got the brass on the rivets here, holding the uh, solid bone shield on. It's got a full nickel bolster here, um, or guard. Uh, it's a nice clip point blade. And that's probably a $200 knife without a name on it. There's no name on there. Now, one thing you have to be aware of. If you can find yourself a big Bowie knife that has age and happens to have one of these names on it, IXL, Joseph Rogers, you're looking at a two dollars or $3,000 knife there. So there's a lot of money in the right knives. Now, the other thing is, oh, okay, novelty knives. Now, this is a strange one where you have to actually hold it like this and there's a little pin that goes in there and you push in and it pops out and you see that little hook there well that will lock it when you hold it like this the pin drops down goes into that little hook and locks it so you can't open it when it's like that you have to go like this push in which lets the pin drop and then it opens and these again advertising uh, giveaway this particular one is Wholesale Goods, St. John's, New Brunswick. And then you have funny things like this, a little round one, which has these big jumbo sleeve board blades on it. And it kind of ends up looking like Mickey Mouse in the end, but this one actually has a Buick advertisement on it. So those are a fun collectible because you can get all sorts of different ones. This one's great. I used it for quite some time, but the blade has been worn away. But on the black brass shield there, it's it's got the Bible open and it says the word of the Lord in the Bible. And then it says it's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, which is so true. And it's Easter today, so I thought that was very fitting. But it's lost its walk and talk now. The pins have loosened off and the blade's just falling right out of it. And then you get some strange stuff like this, which is a lighter and a knife little bit different um, so there's all sorts of varieties you can find too which makes knife collecting fun now where are some of the best places I've found knives 
Well, your flea market's probably number one. If you've got a local flea market near you, guys get knives in all the time. Um, some of the best places though, bottom of a tackle box. I found some fantastic knives in the bottom of a tackle box. You don't think to look there, but there's other things other than fishing knives, which aren't really all that collectible, but I've found quite a few of these old military knives because the guys brought them back from the war and they were just a tool and they threw it in their fishing box. The other place is old toolboxes around workbenches. So if you're at a yard sale and the guy's got his garage door open, you can ask him, say, you got any old knives in there that are kicking around in the tools? And a lot of guys would just throw these old pocket knives in uh, to certain drawers around the shop and the garage, that sort of thing. Great places to look for knives. So um, condition is very important. So first you have your maker, very important. Uh, really elevates the price getting a good maker. Second is, uh, you know, just quality made. Good nickel silver bolsters, brass liners if it's a pocket knife, um, that sort of thing. And condition, condition, condition. So the more ground down and worn it is, then it just becomes a tool rather than a strong collectible. Original sheath scabbards, you want to make sure they're in good shape. Some of these are tooled leather, which uh, really adds to your price as well. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of information on uh, collectible knives and some of the things to look for. Um, now, when you get into the bigger knives, uh, some of the big bladed ones like this, there's things to watch out for. One thing you want to watch out for, banditos carrying large knives. Very dangerous. So you want to be careful with that. Scary monkeys is another thing to watch out for. Has nothing to do with knives whatsoever. I just thought I'd let you know. So happy hunting. Go see what you can find. Don't cut yourself. And thanks for watching. And God bless. Bye-bye.